when Get Right won ESL One Cologne 2014 in August of that year, and he cried, and there was that iconic picture of him holding the trophy, people understand a lot of the context of that. They know that NIP hadn't been the best team for a little while, that they'd been falling off as a team with Fiflar, and everyone said they should cut him. Get Right himself, this was his third straight major final, and they'd lost the last two, both in kind of heartbreaking fashion in different respects. And people wondered, would NIP ever win a major? Actually, maybe their window had passed. So the context of why he cried, people understood, and they understood how epic it was. But I feel like actually a lot of the story behind Guardian crying when he won ESL in New York, not a major, but a very big stacked tournament, a tier one 250k plus tournament, the type that Navi hasn't won before. I don't think people necessarily understood why it was so emotional for him. So I'm going to give you some of his story and you'll kind of get this sense, hopefully. <clears throat> so in Source, I didn't follow Source closely, but... There wasn't a lot of money to be won in Source compared to 1.6, which was the dominant game. And then there wasn't the same level of opportunity. Like there wasn't grand stages and super massive majors that you could play on to the same degree in Source as there was in 1.6. And so Guardian was a very good Source player by all accounts. But even so, people just assumed he was a cheater because think about how insane his orping is. And by the way, that makes sense to a degree. Think about his skills. I mean, if I looked at his skills and I didn't know him as a player, I think, yeah, this should be a candidate for a cheater, right? If you look at his style, super aggro, peak, instantly fire as fast as possible, but hit the shot, that looks like a cheater. His age, he was a young guy, he was like 17, 18 at the time. Location, comes from fucking Slovakia, a country that had no relevance in Counter-Strike history for the majority of the game. Definitely not in 1.6. So then after Source, he gives up 1.6 a try, he comes over, but he's stuck in a regional team. And you have to understand, re teams from that region, Slovakia, Czech Republic, these kind of, they didn't have any impact on 1.6. That's why Oscar was stuck in hell as well. So he accomplished nothing. So CSGO comes out, he switches over, and from basically the beginning, he's really sick actually. He's already a really good player early on when only players that get right forest uh dosia these sorts of players are the best players but he's not in a good team because he's getting a regional team but then he gets a shot in the cis version of virtus pro the one that was the first one to beat nip they make a move and he comes into this team we're talking about the russian ukrainian virtus pro here with dosia and angel and kucha these guys so he comes into this team despite the fact as far as i know he didn't speak russian at the time he was trying to learn it on the go as he's in this team to make it work and yet it's working like they play at dreamhack summer that year in 2013 when nip is still the dominant team they take nip to a super close semi-final but lose narrowly there the next tournament they play at ems one fall which wasn't like a major there wasn't majors back then but it was a one of the biggest esl events and again in the semi final they play NIP, the best team in the world, and they beat NIP this time. And Guardian's a huge factor. Then they go to the final. Okay, we'll just beat the best team in the world, guys. We only have to play Very Games now. Now, Very Games hasn't been super sick for a while since they made the screen swap and they've got shocks now. But they, Very Games beats them, takes the title from in the final. So he's denied the title despite like this actually was a prime moment to maybe win a big title in his career. Then Virtus Pro, the CIS squad, goes and makes a super team from the CIS region called Astana Dragons. And they bring in Mark Love and Edward, the star players of Na'Vi, which were a pretty good team at the time. And they make the CIS super team and they leave Guardian out. He just gets left on the outside and he's just left to wander around, wondering where he's go. And meanwhile, Astana Dragons, they become immediately top three. They're beating NIP a bunch of times. They're competing with very games for the titles. Guardian's just left out there. What team's he going to join? I mean, there's a rumor that he would have joined the Polish ESC, which is the core that later became Virtus Pro. Instead, they go with Snacks and Bialy, and they become Universal Soldiers and later Virtus Pro, and obviously they have their own success. So instead, he's left with nowhere to go. But because of his time in CIS Virtus Pro, our CIS teams are willing to give us the time of day. So he gets to join Na'Vi at the end of 2013, but this is not a good Na'Vi. The Na'Vi he joined was busted up. I mean, they'd lost Edward and, and Marklov. Then Edward came back, but only because Edward was doing badly in Astana Dragons. So they'd lost their true staff from 1.6, uh, Marklov. And they look now like a team that's like, this team isn't going to accomplish anything. But Guardian's what changes that. In 2014, Guardian just starts carrying now not every game he wasn't like a kenny s hard carry but any game that they won and had a chance in he was carrying now he was a bit inconsistent but when he did it he could make navi from like the eighth best team into like a team that could potentially upset a tier one you know top three or top four team and so as a result what carries them in 2014 is Guardian's sick individual performances and Zeus's like weird unique but effective slow style of tactics where you wind the clock down and so they, they come right out in, I think, in like May or April, they win Star Ladder Season 9. But you know what? It's a fluke. It's a smaller event. Like, they weren't even supposed to be there. Fnatic was meant to be there, but there was a war in Ukraine, so Fnatic chose not to go. Na'Vi got to go as, like, the local reps, and they went, and they amazingly fluked the event. But everyone just looked at it and went, yeah, what happened again? And it didn't. They go to DreamHack Summer, they make the final there, they beat Virtus Pro. they're playing against NIP, they lose to NIP. They give NIP another title. 
Then you, and by the way, for, uh, Guardian had his issues in that final. <clears throat> they have like okay results elsewhere, but again, they're not winning events. They're not some super good team, despite what Guardian can do. At the majors, they're like good. They can make the round of eight, but they're not going much further than that. And if they do, they're just going to win them up and lose to some other really good team. Finally, Drivak Winter, the last major of 2014, they make it to the semis, thanks in part to Dignitas and some weird pick ban shit in the round of eight, but they make it to the semis, unfortunately have to play LDLC, second best team in the world, they lose to LDLC, LDLC goes on to win the major, you know, again, can't do it, and this actually at that point in time, LDLC, and later on Envy, used to write, routinely beat up on Navi, which is interesting because obviously the, the, that matchup flipped later, so at this point in time, they're very much a one-man team, and even as a one-man team, Guardian isn't like the pure every game hard carry in the sense that you'd want if it's going to be a one-man team like Nico and Kenny S and those sorts of guys, so you come in to 2015, and they've got Flamey now, he joins in like April or May, <coughs> and right off the bat, occasionally he's given you the odd superstar performance. So when he does that, they can win now. Now he's got some help as Guardian. And so even so, the events they win are the smaller ones. They win EPL Winter. That was before it was the SL Pro League, like the full one we think of now with all the top teams. That was where like Astralis didn't have device. That was where there was no Fnatic at the tournament, who's the best team in the world. There was all these asterisks next to it. Okay, they win Star Ladder 13. Great, they beat Envious in the final. That's when Envious is starting to go off the boil. There's no Fnatic. There's no Astralis. There's none of the other good teams there. So that one doesn't really count. They win late in the year. I am San Jose. Oh, great job, right? I am San Jose. Problem with that is Virtus Pro doesn't have snacks. There's no Fnatic. There's no, uh, let me think, no Envious. So again, asterisks. These are all good events, but they're not the biggest event. They're not the most stacked event, and they're not like the prestige events, unfortunately. So always like a caveat to the event. Like, oh, you won, but yeah, but there's these reasons why. So the majors, they continue to heartbreak. I mean, worth pointing out, <coughs> Guardian himself actually never used to be super sick at the majors. He used to like underwhelm a little bit, probably because of the pressure on him as an individual one-man carry, right? But at Clusion of Poker, that all changed. The third major of 2014, uh, 2015. In this major, so it would have been the eighth major overall, he goes god mode, and for my money, is the MVP of the tournament. He carries Na'Vi to the final. And in the final, he even gives him a chance on map one to win the first map and have a chance to actually, like, maybe win this title. Doesn't happen. Actually, Na'Vi guys get wrecked on their own map, which is quite sad. And then as a result, Envious wins the, the major. Guardian's heartbroken, despite one of his best forms ever, and at the major, doesn't win. But you know what? The end of the year, things are looking up for Na'Vi. Starx has taken over as in-game leader and he's more effective. Flamey, Starx is like protege, is getting better and better and having consistent star performances. He's starting to peak as we saw ESL, ESEA Pro League Season 2 Finals where he was like the MVP of the tournament. Now it's looking like, right, he's got the help, he's got the system, he's got the team, he's got the in-game leader. Now it's Guardian's time and Guardian's in God mode. 2016 should be Guardian's year. He should be winning majors and huge tournaments. You know what? He's the best player in the world early on. They have a sick team, they have firepower, they have in-game leading, they have a system, and they're not winning. They're going to finals and they're losing. The only finals they're winning have little asterisks next to them. Again, the old asterisks are back for the Na'Vi guys. They win at DreamHack Leipzig. But you know what? No Fnatic, the best team in the world that's winning everything. Sure, they beat Luminosity. But Luminosity hasn't become the best team. You know what? Luminosity hasn't won a big event. Okay, they win Counter Pit. Yeah, Adverse Pro, they're getting there. Had Astralis there, had Envious. Envious has just changed the player. Astralis chokes in the final. VP plays them well, but isn't quite in top form yet. Guardians in God mode, they win the tournament. Loads of asterisks. No Luminosity, no Fnatic. Problems again. So at that tournament, can't appear. Guardian is in God mode. He's the MVP. The next tournament is MLG Columbus, the first major of the year. They come in and Na'Vi makes it to the final. They make it to their second straight final at a major. All on the basis, though, of the system, and the tactics, the map pool, and Edward having an over overperformance. Guardian is actually playing pretty badly. He's not in God mode from Counterpeer. But you know what? They're in the final anyway. If he can just have one good series, they can win a major. He can accomplish his dream and win a huge tournament with no asterisks next to it. He's primed to win it. They're going against Luminosity, a team that in the big matches they've beaten. The only time they didn't beat them was the first time Guardians injury flared up, which was the semi-final of Katowice, and even then it was a mega close game. This is a team that, in theory, they have a slight map pool advantage over. We think that they have a couple of maps that they're going to be better than them on. And you know what happens? Injury wrecks Guardian in this final. He has to use four times his sensitivity in the final. Struggles individually. Flamey does his best to carry. does his best on map one. They still lose narrowly. Map two is, is Na'Vi's pick, overpass. They get destroyed on it really embarrassingly in devastating fashion. The best chance for Guardian to win a major is done. It's wrecked. And now everyone's wondering because of his injury, is he ever going to get another chance? Guardian's probably wondering that. He comes back 
after a short amount of time at Drinking Malmo, but he's not really back. He's not really superstar guardian. He has the odd game, but he's not dominating the way he was at the end of last year and the beginning of this year. He's a guy where it's looking like, okay, the system can carry them, but can Guardian anymore? That's the real question, right? Is he ever going to be the same player again? And so next major, they go out in the round of eight this time. They lose to Team Liquid and Simple, a guy that was always out of place that everyone said from the Seattle region, oh, don't worry about him. He'll never be on a relevant team. Now he's beaten you out. And now you've lost in the round of eight of a major. You're not even going deep anymore. E-League comes along. They get wrecked by the old enemy Fnatic and in embarrassing fashion, the semis completely collapse. Everyone's thinking, you know what? Forget making finals and losing. Na'Vi's done. So Na'Vi makes this huge gamble. They bring in Simple and they kick out Zeus. <clears throat> and they think, great, we've got the best player in the world or one of them or the best player from our region. We're going to add him to our team. Guardian doesn't even have to have all the pressure on him anymore. And we've got Starx as our ring-game leader. We've got everything, right? We're going to be sick. Valve bans coaching right afterwards. Starx is out of the equation. The system's out of the equation. It's back on the players. Guardian's really struggling still. They go to their first event, Star Series. They bomb the event. They finish last place in this event on home soil. Incredibly embarrassing. Lose to the Chinese team, Tai Lu, for example. Lose to Astralis. This is really embarrassing shit. Next event comes along, ESO One New York. Super stacked event, huge 250k tournament, big venue inside the Barclays Center in the US where the Islanders and the Nets play. They have the dream group stage. They win all their games against what end up being top three teams in the group stage. They beat them all. They beat SK, they beat VP, they beat Team Liquid. They go to the semis, they play Team Liquid. Simple's old team. They get smashed on Cobble, but they come back. Simple carries them, they get to the final. Guardian's in another final where he hasn't even played that well. He's been playing pretty lackluster in the whole tournament. But in the final, it's like the time he once needed it in that Columbus final. Even if he's injured, even if he's out of shape, he just needed it once in the final. He gets it this time. Now he plays like old Guardian. He turns into the sick Guardian of earlier that year, end of 2015. He goes God mode as well as simple. And even then, they don't win by a big margin. They don't blow votes pro away. Plow away. Pro away, whatever. They win really narrowly against an incredible Virtus Pro that swing next level CS. And in the exactly the kind of close, heartbreaking fashion that it's always Navi who lost with in the ESL, ESEA Pro League finals, that they lost in in some of the other finals, in the first map of MLG Columbus. It's always them who lose these heartbreaking maps where they're the ones who are left to be like, oh, I've only won extra run. And this time, Guardians played sick, his team's played sick, he's got a new team, they've won a really big event, and he cries justifiably as he realizes the, the 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 impact of what his entire career has led to and now he's got that big win not a major but still a huge win and with no caveats with no asterisks he's done it himself and so when you know his toil you can understand his tears